I promise it won't happen again. On the way na ako, I'll be there in five minutes. Trust me, I'll finish the job on time. I swear, hindi hindi kita sasaktan. Believe me, I won't disappoint you. Promise, ma'am, magpapas po ako bukas. I will have you and hold you from this day forward till death to us part. Familiar? Pinangakuan ka na ba ng ganito? Or have you made one of these promises to someone? One way or another, we have faced promises. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning devotional. Everyone has broken a promise at some point in their lives, but some people do it more often than others. But why do people break promises? Are promises meant to be broken? A promise is defined as a legally binding declaration that gives the person to whom it is made a right to expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of a specified act. Therefore, when a promise is made, there are legitimate reasons to believe that it will take place. But in today's world, the seriousness of breaking promises has been practically tossed aside. That is why there are disappointments, failed relationships, broken families, and the like. A study even shows that a broken promise is one of the major reasons why people commit suicide. And for us Christians, it may be a spiritual suicide. The disappointment caused by unfulfilled promise is the main reason why people fall away from the faith. Isn't God a promise keeper? How does God view promises? Does God consider promise as being meant to be broken? In Genesis chapter 18, we can see the Lord promise Abraham that Sarah and him will have a son. In verse 10, it says, Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you at this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. From this story, we can learn three aspects that we must consider when God promises. Whenever God promises, He surely does. Note in verse 1 of chapter 21, The Lord kept His word and did for Sarah exactly what He had promised. God always keeps his promises. He is a promise keeper. The Christian life is a process of discovering, unwrapping, and enjoying the many promises of God that are scattered throughout his word. It's like looking for hidden treasures. Ang sabi nga ni Pastor Mark sa atin in one of his preachings, what has been revealed to you is yours. You cannot claim what you did not know, and you cannot expect what you did not receive. That is why it is of utmost importance to read and study the Word of God. Now, do you fear death and judgment? Are you struggling with guilt? Are you anxious about some situation? Well, God promises life to those who put their trust in Jesus. God also promises forgiveness of sins. Iniimbitahin niya tayo to cast all our anxieties on Him because He cares for us. And He promises His protection that no weapon formed against us may prosper. You can count on these promises and more, knowing that what God has promised, He will surely do. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's nice to know. But I've been asking God for some things for years. Pero hindi pa rin niya ako sinasagot. Hindi pa rin niya ako pinapakinggan. That's the second aspect of God's promise. Whenever God promises, He does in His time. Note in verse 2, She became pregnant and she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. God doesn't work according to our timetable, but His. Abraham and Sarah had to wait for Isaac for 25 years. With us, 25 years seems like forever. But with God, a thousand years is just a day. Clearly, God is not in any hurry to bring about His plan. Maybe some of you have been waiting on God for years to fulfill some promise. You may even go to your grave without saying it fulfilled, just like the prophets in the Old Testament who had foreseen the coming of Jesus but had never witnessed it. Was God late in bringing Christ into the world? Definitely not. The Holy Spirit writes through Paul in the book of Galatians that, but when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth His Son. God is never late, nor early in fulfilling His plans. And you can have the assurance, knowing that what God has promised, He will do it in His time. Now, you may ask, why does He make me wait? 
Bakit kailangan kong maghintay? There are a number of reasons, some of which we may never know, but one reason is very clear in our story. Whenever God promises, He does when we reach the end of ourselves. Verse 5 mentioned Abraham as being 100 years old. Verses 2 and 7 repeat the fact that it was in his old age. The point is that God provided Isaac for Abraham and Sarah when they had reached the end of their ability to produce a son. If they were going to receive the promised son, it would have to be totally God's doing. And indeed it was. They rejoiced in saying God do the impossible on their behalf. God wants each of us to come to that point of completely casting ourselves on Him so that He gets all the glory for the results in our lives. Now that doesn't mean that we are passive. Here in this story, we can see Abraham actively obeying God by naming the boy Isaac and by circumcising him in verses 3 and 4. Coming to the end of ourselves doesn't mean that we passively sit back and do nothing. It means that we actively obey God, depending totally on Him, for the power and the results. As I end, three things I want to leave you from this story. First, whenever God promises, He will surely do. No spoken word of God faltered in the history of mankind. Second, whenever God promises, He does it in His time, not according to what we have planned or envisioned, but according to His timetable, His perfect time. And lastly, whenever God promises, He does it when we reach the end of ourselves, so that we cannot boast about our ability nor our human strength, but rather be thankful that only because of the power and the grace of the Lord in our lives, it will happen. Therefore, we have to fully understand these aspects whenever God promises so that we will not get hurt, disappointed, have regrets, or make mistakes in our Christian journey. And as we embark in the second half of this year of fulfillment of divine promises, may we all continue to hold on to the promises God has given to each of us. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness at salamat po sa pagsama sa amin ngayong magang ito. Salamat po sa iyong mga salata na nagbibigay ng kalakasan sa amin in the midst of what is happening in this present time. Patuloy po kaming maniniwala at patuloy po kaming mananampalataya na tunay at tapat ang iyong mga salata. So grant us the patience and forbearance to wait for the fulfillment of your promises in our lives. And as we wait, give us the fire and the desire to linger into your presence. And we remember our church, our mentors, our country, our families, and everyone who is listening right now. Speak peace into our hearts as you give us the understanding to know of your divine plans. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you for your love and for your unending grace. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.